The Occupational Safety and Health Administration is investigating that deadly trench collapse in Hudson. Our investigation found this steel frame box used to shore up trench walls was not used in the area where the workers were trapped. And this 911 call from the scene confirms it. These guys have had a cave in, didn't have a box. Kind of a morbid scene. I mean, you know, we've got two bodies down in there that we were unable to get to. That's not the outcome that any of us wanted to have. Firefighters say that the men did not have a safeguard around the trench to stop the dirt from collapsing in on them. A man who was repairing an underground sewer line became trapped about 12 feet down a trench. Considering the weight of the dirt, they weren't able to just pull him out because uh, of the compressed dirt uh, inside as well as the weight of it. And we are continuing with breaking news. A man is dead after a trench collapse. Now the son was trapped up to his neck in dirt. OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, has been on scene here. The investigation is now under their control. A construction worker is recovering tonight after being trapped in a trench. Fortunately, rescue workers say the man was breathing and conscious as he was being loaded into the back of an ambulance. This after being buried in a trench that ran 15 feet deep. It's no secret that excavation work can be dangerous. The Bureau of Labor Statistics reports that, on average, about 70 people die every year due to cave-ins from trenches. Add to that another thousand or so workers that get injured every year from cave-ins. 95% of these incidents have one thing in common. They were not properly safeguarded against. And with so many other unpredictable dangers in the construction industry, why expose yourself to injury, leading to lost time, or even the risk of death when there are clear and simple safety measures you can take to protect yourself. In this video, we'll cover key elements of an excavation, as well as some important safety measures you can take to protect yourself. These will help you determine whether an environment is safe to work in, and if it's not, what you can do to help make it safer for yourself and those working around you. The first thing to consider with an excavation is soil conditions. There are a variety of soil types and ground conditions that will determine the proper course of action for an excavation. But before you start taking a closer look at the excavated soil, look around the site for things that can cause soil distress like nearby vibrating machinery, heavy moving loads, seeping water or rain, as well as hot, dry weather. All of these things can lead to additional stress on soil where increased precautions would be necessary. One of the most important factors that can help determine the likelihood of a cave-in is the type of soil that you're excavating. Knowing the type of soil you're working with will help determine the proper slope of that excavation. There are three main classifications of soil types. A, B, and C. Type A is the most stable type and usually consists of clay. If you don't have any of the tools used to determine soil type, a quick way to figure this out is by taking a sample in your hand and pressing your thumb into it. If your thumb sinks in only about a quarter of an inch, you have type A soil. With type A, the slope of your excavation can be no less than three feet horizontal for every four feet vertical. If your thumb goes in about a quarter to three quarters of an inch, you probably have type B soil. This has a medium level of stability and can be made up of silt, sandy loam, or medium density clay. With type B soil, your excavation slope can be no less than one foot horizontal for every one foot vertical. This type of soil can also include unstable dry rock or soil that's been previously disturbed. Now if your thumb penetrates more than two inches rather easily, you have type C soil. This is the least stable soil and generally consists of gravel, loamy sand, or soft clay. With type C soil, your excavation slope can be no less than 6 feet horizontal for every 4 feet vertical. Now that you know the proper slope to use for the various different soil types, let's talk about shoring and shielding systems. Shoring and shielding are two different methods of protecting workers in a trench from a cave-in and can be used in conjunction with sloping. Shoring is a support provided to prevent the walls of a trench from caving in. This is typically done using hydraulic, pneumatic, or timber braces. The specific shoring setup that you use depends on the soil type and how deep your excavation will go. Shoring is always installed from the top down and removed from the bottom up. So for example, in a shoring system, the stringers, uprights, and upper cross braces 
would be installed first. Then the lower stringers and cross braces are put in. The number of rows of stringers and cross braces depends on the depth of the excavation. Upper cross braces should be installed within two feet of ground level. If the trench is up to eight feet deep, two sets of stringers and cross braces are required. In a trench eight to 12 feet deep, three sets of stringers and cross braces is required. And a 12 to 15 foot trench requires four sets of stringers and cross braces. In looser soil conditions, the uprights should be placed side by side. Plywood can be used in place of some of the uprights as long as the trench is less than nine feet deep, the plywood is three quarters of an inch thick or thicker, the uprights are installed at no more than 24 inch centers, and the cross braces do not bear directly onto the plywood but onto the stringers and uprights. A shielding system, on the other hand, is designed less to prevent cave-ins and more to protect workers in the event of a cave-in, and is typically done with the use of what's called a trench box or shield box. Trench boxes typically come pre-assembled and are lowered into the excavation via machinery. No workers should be present in the excavation when a trench box is being lowered or removed. A standard trench box can be rented for about $150 to $200 per day. Once in an excavation or trench, a worker should remain aware of his or her surroundings as there are several hazards other than cave-ins that can be common in a trench. The first of these is a hazardous atmosphere within the trench. This can include flammable as well as toxic vapors. Flammable vapors with a vapor density greater than air can accumulate in low areas of a trench and ignite with any number of ignition sources. Sources of these flammable vapors can be ruptured pipes in the trench, heavy vapors in the area, and materials that are brought in. Toxic vapors can accumulate in trenches through the soil depending on the surrounding ground environments. It's important to have testing equipment handy to make sure oxygen levels remain normal and toxicity levels remain low. Anytime oxygen levels dip below 19.5%, respiratory equipment is needed. Another excavation hazard to be aware of is underground utilities, like electric, gas, cable, phone, or water. Always call 811 or a similar one-call underground service prior to excavation. Once in a trench, a worker should always check for unknown utility lines that may have been damaged during the digging. Water accumulation can create a dangerous environment as well, causing slip hazards, electrocution, and in the case of rainwater accumulation, even cave-ins from wet, soft soil on the trench walls. Water pumps should be used in any trench where this happens. Maintaining proper access and egress to an excavation is important as well. Make sure that any ladder going into a trench extends three feet above that trench. The precautions for working around excavations are fairly straightforward, yet they remain one of the biggest sources of injury and death in all of construction. That's why OSHA requires a competent person be on every excavation job site to ensure the precautions we discussed here are followed. To learn more about excavation safety, or to get certified in a competent person course, visit our website at etraintoday.com. Thank you.